in the morning, NBA legend Horace Grant here Ooh. with us right four now. Four time champion? Four times. Four times. Four times. Four, four times. times. The world champ. It should have been six, but I'm okay with four. Do you ever throw your championships in your brother's face? Be honest. Be honest. Always. <laughs> Always. Just walking through the airport, people, Horace or Harvey? I'm like, uh, Harvey don't have these. Whoa, Ooh. come on, man. Let me see that ring. Can, is that hard, easy to come off? Can I, can I see it real quick? Oh. Let's you see go. which one he keeps on now, him. Horace, you're still pretty in good shape, man. Like, you don't, you know, some ball players you see from your time, they didn't hold up so well. You mean like Charles Barkley? <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, no, but, you know, <laughs> Chuck is Chuck, but, uh, you know, I, I try to work out three days a week. Uh, so uh, you still, but do you play basketball? Is that part of your routine? Are you still out here running around hooping or? Uh? No, I just go out and shoot, uh, run up and down the court uh, with some friends a uh, few days a week and uh, nothing crazy like, uh, you know, a men's league or anything yeah. like that. Somebody might try to hurt you, make a name off you. Yeah, trying to, you know, undercut me, you know, but uh, if somebody ever did, um uh, I seen you. I seen you getting a couple of skirmishes. Oh out. yeah, you've been in a couple. Of you liked. You liked. Dust up. You were scrappy back then, Horace. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I remember it well. This is the basketball I grew up on. You got it. Hey. You like to scrap a little bit. Well, it's in. The, it was in the eighties and nineties. You know. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I played in two thousand with uh, with the Lakers. But uh, back in the day, man, you know, uh, you get undercut, you get up, yeah. you shake it off. And then you uh, shake it off. You shake it off <laughs> on your opponent. Now, right. I, I recently was watching. Um, I was watching a, a Celtics Lakers game. Uh, for, they were replaying on on NBA uh, on one of the ESPN channels. And man, there were moments in games where I saw I saw Robert Parrish like basically throw a straight up punch at someone. These guys basically got into a fight, and at the end, they pulled them aside. A couple free throws. Back to the game. That was uh, Boston and Detroit. Robert Parrish. Oh, that's right. It was Detroit. It was Detroit. Robert Parrish just came out, bam, 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 on Bill Lambeer. Knocked him down, couple punches. Um, didn't get through. Get, I mean, just pulled him apart. Uh, he probably got fined 500 bucks, but he still <laughs> played the game. Like, now, yeah. how do you feel about that? Do you do you think that that is the way the game that should be played, or do you feel that times have changed and it can no longer be that way? Evolution of the game and players, but uh, my personal opinion, I don't condone. Um, you know, I mean, condone I couldn't, fighting. I, and yeah, all I that. don't condone fighting and things of that nature. But um, I, I, I think the game should be a little more physical uh, because fans like that. Some of the fans like the fast-paced uh, alley hoop and yeah, things yeah. of that nature. But the fans like um, the, the aggressive. Of, of players in terms of, you know, getting your face a little bit, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Talk back, a little smack. Back in the day, um, they still show the highlights of um, Michael, uh, MJ, and one getting up in X, uh, X's face. Xavier uh, McDaniel? Uh, Xavier yeah, McDaniel yeah, face, boy. stuff like that. So. All right, so let's stay right there on Mike. I'm glad you got to Mike quick in okay. this interview. Let's talk about Mike. <laughs> well, can we, hold on, can we say one thing right in there specifically about that? Can you talk about the level of ish talk because everyone says that Michael had the golden boy image at the time but he was the worst yeah, trash boy. talker that he would say anything you were right there just how nasty a trash talker was Michael with MJ nothing was off limits <clears throat> your mom your, your mom, wife your, your kids wife, your, your brother your dog you you name it um nothing was off limit and that's that competitive nature that he had um you know a kid named LeBrad for Smith used to play with the uh, Bullets Wizard. Um, he had thirty-eight points on MJ, mm. and we had to play him the next night. MJ didn't talk to anybody. Walking off the court, and everybody was saying, "Oh, this is the next MJ," and he had scored those many points yeah. on MJ. The next game we played them in their home t uh, in their arena, MJ had forty at halftime. <laughs> 40. <laughs> and you never heard of LeBrad for Smith again. Never. And I'm from D.C. <laughs> I don't remember LeBrad for yeah. Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So now Mike, you know, people say Mike, um, he did the trash talk, but he also was not afraid to back it up. And he also was not afraid to mix it up even with his own teammates. And, you know, nowadays we hear about Kobe going hard at his team. We hear about these things. And now because of social media and video and more press and more media and things like that, more coverage, you see Kobe going hard, screaming at people in practice, talking trash. 
What was you see this, but you lived through the mic thing. We didn't see that. What what was the difference there, or was there any difference? Oh, it was different. I mean, uh, our practices were so intense because Phil, the mastermind behind everything, would put MJ on the second team, and me and Scotty would be on the first team. And the, being competitive, like he was, man, un, unreal, unreal. And you know, of course, p- punches got thrown, uh, many fights. And I'm just so happy that social media wasn't back then. <laughs> you, and, you and Mike ever get into it yourselves? You guys ever scrap or no? No, not physically, but uh, verbally. Oh, we we went at each you other. You thought about smacking Mike though? No, of course not. Because if if MJ goes out, the Bulls go down. No, 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 no. He knows where his bread gets buttered. <laughs> yes, sir. What about uh, Scotty and Michael ever get into it? Uh, not physically. I mean, uh, verbally. Yeah. I mean, just a couple a couple guys that uh, Michael uh, was it punched. was it just Bushler and like Steve Kerr? Was he just beating up the little white boys? Let's be honest. No, he he beat up a big white boy, Will Purdue. <laughs> so uh, Purdue got one also. Yeah, I mean, uh, I hate to tell the story, but you know, Will and I still good friends. Listen, Will, I mean, Will, Will, you got beat up by Michael Jordan. It's cool. What man. happened? Uh, what happened? You know, we, uh, you know, typical Phil, you know, running this play, and Will set a legal pick on MJ. <laughs> MJ said, Will, don't do it again. What are you talking about? That's Will. MJ said, all right. Phil said, ran it again. So naturally ran it two more, uh, two more times. Legal pick. MJ walks up to Will. Boom. Let him up. Let him up. It was over. You know, we grabbed Will. You know, it, you're not going to hurt MJ. Right. <laughs> Mike gets to punch and hey, then get separated. Hey, you're not, hey, MJ can take care of himself, but you know. No, we, y'all we, we, are making we, sure. Yeah, yeah. So the next day on the plane, Will gets on the on the plane with a huge shiner. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing. So. Yo, we're hanging out with Horace Grant, uh, four-time NBA champ, uh, one time in the All-Star game, right? Was yes. it 97? 94. 94. Yeah. Um, do you compare, I mean, I lived it. I grew up in the 80s, watched the games, okay, the 90s games. Today's game is fun, right? It's a family affair, right? Um, It seems like the players get out there, you know, they have a good time, and it's fun. But back in the 80s and 90s, it seemed way more competitive. It seemed like the energy was like an actual game, like they were competing for bragging rights. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that intensity is even in the All-Star game now? (sighs) Like I said earlier, evolution of players and games, and um, I think the game is in a great, uh, a great position right now. But back in the day, I mean, we weren't making twenty five million dollars a year. True, and we wanted to win that um, that game in the All Star game because that was another fifteen to twenty five twenty five thousand dollars extra. Got and as far spending as, money, and as far as going out and playing in that game, yeah, we wanted bragging rights. Because we felt that that could carry on over into the second half of the season. You know, I bust your butt in the All-Star game. I'm going to continue to do it. So um, it was very competitive back then. Now it's still competitive. I mean, I'm pretty sure guys want to win, but it's more of a um, entertaining purpose uh, for kids and, and, right, and, right, right. and fans. And the brands and everything that's involved. Correct. Um, when you and Mike, you and Mike, uh, I'm sure the teams went out to dinner a lot, right? You guys used to hang out, go to dinner and things like that. Um, Mike ever, what was Mike's like favorite thing to get? What what, what, what would he get? Uh, MJ loved pineapple. Really? For some crazy reason, he likes he loved pineapple. <laughs> well, it's a delicious fruit. There's no question. <laughs> now, I have, I have another Michael Jordan question for you. One thing that surprised a lot of people was in his Hall of Fame speech, Michael went basically on a tirade about everyone who'd ever doubted him, and it became this really interesting moment to me where we all realized as fans that the greatest player of all time was a, an insecure person like everybody else. He had his own things that he seemed obsessed with. Were you surprised by what he said, or did he always seem obsessed with anyone who ever questioned him? Well, you don't question question greatness. And that's what MJ, I mean, MJ had this philosophy, I'm the best. And no one is going to tell me that I'm not the best. And that's that being that having that competitive spirit. And um no. Uh, who who knows MJ 
that speech was expected. Got I it. just put it that way. You weren't surprised by it? No. No, absolutely not. All the guys that really used to talk uh, trash about him, uh, meaning coaches, um, you know, Van Gundy. Yeah, he, no, he, MJ don't forget things like that. You were you got to the Bulls, what, three years after Jordan had got there? Yes. About three years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, a lot of people forget the early days of Michael Jordan when he first got into the league and his shorts were longer than everyone else and his style of play was different than everyone else and he used to shoot too much and the media really got on him about... I remember they used to have those t-shirts. Remember those bad, those uh, uh, team t-shirts they had that were like the animated figures? Mm -hmm. They had one for the Bulls that was all Michael Jordan's face with no one else's face on you, Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> um, talk about now like when you see these younger players like a a Kobe Bryant, right? Mm -hmm. um, going it's funny to say like younger players like Kobe Bryant, who's now an old man himself, <laughs> who's an old man himself, right? But um, talk Horace about why or will Kobe ever be Michael Jordan? Is it all? Is it just about getting that sixth ring, or is there something else that you see being played with Michael, watching Kobe that you see similarities? He could be, or he'll never be. <clears throat> well, I had the uh, a great opportunity to play with them both. You know, MJ in Chicago and, and Kobe with the Lakers. Um, the, you can compare them because it's their uh, attitude towards the game and their opponent um, was is so so similar, and the passion for the game. Um, uh, but you know, only one MJ, and I and I say that in the respect of. Of course, Kobe winning five, helping win five NBA championship. MJ would shake your hand at half court and thinking about literally stepping on your neck um, to win that ball game. Whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever it takes. And Kobe, you know, if he don't like you, he just, I mean, you know he don't like you. I mean, if, 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 if that's, you know, um, a difference, that's a difference. But MJ, I mean, you might never know. Yeah, it's it's a different level. Yeah, you you don't know with MJ. And, and, and almost you're saying he was almost willing to go an extra step in terms of acting nice to you, and then wanting to destroy <laughs> you just that much. You know, Scott and I, uh, Pip and I used to have this saying. We used to stand on the sideline when MJ went out to um, half court. You know, captains come out, and if we see the captains of the other team shake his hand and smile and laugh. We know we had that game because they're having fun with MJ. They're they just want, they want to watch. Yeah, yeah, they want to watch. Yeah, but we knew MJ was thinking about putting the boot on your throat, and, uh, and which he did. Yeah. You know what I find really interesting is that you are an amazing athlete. You went to Clemson, correct? Correct. Uh, number ten overall draft pick, four rings, an All Star appearance. I mean, people just dream of the the NBA career you've had. Yet there's absolutely no question. That because you played with Michael Jordan, people like us right now talk to you nonstop about MJ. Does that bother you at all, or is it something you're proud to do? Humbly, I mean, the best career anybody could ask for. To play with MJ, Kobe, Shaq, Karl Malone, Gary Payton, those guys. Once you know your value on that particular team, I mean, I can sit here and talk about MJ because I knew he was one of the best leaders that ever, ever played the game. He taught me how to be competitive. I mean, not saying that I was competitive. I mean, yeah, you obviously knew how to compete. Yeah, but he taught me, um, don't let him see you hurt. You go out there and you do your, you do your role and uh, we'll take care of the rest. You know, that's such a great leader. So to talk about MJ... Oh, man, well-deserved. And you don't feel like, hey, guys, you know, I'm pretty damn good in my own right. You know, like, I don't know. If I if I left here and every time I went to do anything else, people were just like, yo, working with Ebro. I mean, what a moment. Like, I'd be like, yeah, Ebro's great, but what about me? <laughs> but, I mean, with MJ, it's just something you're, I guess you got to just be happy to be a part of it. Listen, it, man, listen. I mean, like I said, a great leader. And if it wasn't for MJ, I don't I don't think I'd be sitting here right now. I mean, not saying that I wouldn't have had a, a pretty decent career, but uh, for a leader to lead you to three you'd championships. Have been, you'd have been like your brother is what you're saying. 
I didn't say that, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hold on. I'm from, I'm from D.C. now. I, I'm Harvey from, was nice. I'm now. from D.C. and Harvey yeah. was a hell of a player. Yeah. But Harvey was playing next to Jeff Ballone and Bernard King, <laughs> who were fantastic players, but they weren't MJ. Because yeah. you guys weren't that different in skill, right? You guys were in the same ballpark. Well, Harvey was a small forward. I'm power forward. You know, he liked to shoot the jumper, and um, I like to mix it up. So that was a little difference in our games. But, man, he had such a, a good career when they were the Bullets. I mean, I'm reading the papers, and he's averaging 18 points, and I'm averaging 11. You want to hold that I, hold that hand up, though? Yeah, put the hand up. I know. Time. Then, uh, yeah. By the way, it's the 91, 92 Bulls ring. In case you're wondering, <laughs> that he's. I'm gonna put it on Instagram for everyone. <laughs> it was all good. Um, Phil Jackson, um, can you tell? You said you said earlier the mastermind, right? Um, I think you know. Phil was the first coach that we ever got to hear about actually masterminding not just things on the basketball court, but things off the basketball court, like the time that Michael supposedly had the flu, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> There's conspiracy theories where it was like, Mike wasn't sick. They did that to get the other team to be like, to relax so that Mike could go out there and put him to sleep, mm -hmm. right? And you just spoke about Mike shaking hands, being chummy chummy with the other team to get them to relax a little bit so y'all go for the kill. Is that real? Was it? Did it? Was it that far along where, uh, even off the court, y'all were masterminding strategies to get the media to play into certain things so that you guys could go for the kill? That was all Phil. Um, speaking of uh, PJ, I mean, for a guy to um, have all different ter uh, types of personality coexist, you know, MJ, Pip, myself, the first three. Then you got Dennis. Uh, coming on for the last three and Ron Harper um, it, it takes a genius man because we all had egos um, you know we all wanted to to have some of the spotlight but uh, Phil did his thing he did his thing and as far as uh, the flu MJ had the flu mm. he had the flu and he was he was really so truly, you gonna keep going with the story hey, he, was, no, he, was, the he story. was he was truly sick <laughs> but um, and but you know, even on his deathbed, he just he was just that great. You guys, Horace Grant's here giving us great talk. Thank you very much. Um, the All Star Weekend is taking over the entire New York City area, and there's actually two NBA houses, right, where yeah. people can go uh, see see uh, former players. Yes, yourself, Horace Grant, will be there. Yeah. Autographs, all that. Where's that at, Rosenberg? So you have um, you have the NBA house in Manhattan, mm -hmm. Skylight at uh, Moynihan Station. Um, that is going down all week, February 10th through the 16th. And then the Brooklyn location is LIU Brooklyn Paramount Theater, February mm. 11th through 15th. And tickets for NBA House are on sale uh, starting at 10 bucks. You can go get them at NBATickets.com. Great opportunity to hang out with legendary players like this guy. Yo, big up to the NBA for um, setting this up for Horace Grant to come through. Talk about where you see players today. You were talking about how Phil Mastermind and Kiwi Egos together. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of egos now, right? Like even right now, LeBron and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love learning how to play together. They're, they were all superstars in their own right, and now here they come together and trying to put together a team. Do you um, do you see players struggling with that knowing their role thing a lot more now than when you played? Well, when I played, you know, we not saying that guys don't play for the love of the game because uh, ninety eight percent of them do, but back in the day, I mean. You know, the dollars wasn't there per se like it is now. Um, it was all about winning. When you won back in the day, you knew you were going to get that first, uh, get that championship ring, and then you were going to get a nice bonus. But now, today, I mean, uh, the championship ring is the ultimate goal for these players. But, you know, they're making 20, 18, 20, 22 million dollars. And saying that, um, um, Kevin Love, LeBron James, and uh, Kyrie Irving, it's going to take a little time for them to mesh because, as you said, you know, um, different teams, I mean, they were the guy. And in order to be successful, you had to put those egos aside and know that LeBron is, is the, the man. Guy. Is the man. I mean, Kevin Love, uh, my advice, you know, be a rebounder, hit the open jumper, play some defense. 
Let LeBron do LeBron. Let LeBron be LeBron. And Kyrie distribute. Hey, Kyrie distribute. Mm -hmm. uh, he can, you know, he and can you, score. And he's going to have his nights like he did the other yeah. night when he had 55. Last night he dropped 55. He hey, can score next question. LeBron score. wasn't playing. Now, but, but, but Horace, don't you think also back then, let's be honest, there weren't as many guys on one team. I mean, the Bulls were Jordan's team. Mm -hmm. And as much as Pippen is an all-time great, he is... Head and shoulders beneath Michael Jordan. Michael was the clear cut, no question about it. You know what I'm saying? You guys all, it was basically a team of great role players right. and you're one guy. Do you think that maybe that formula is a little better than having multiple big time scorers on one team? Well, guys have to look at it right now. That's LeBron's team. No, I mean, no, that's LeBron's city. Yeah. <laughs> state. 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 Yeah. But. That's his team. Yeah. That's it's his team, and in in order for them to be successful, uh, regardless of the the talent uh, he has on there, um, he has to take over. He has to take over, and and not taking anything away from my man Pip. I mean Pip, man, let's Hall of Famer, uh, ten, twelve times. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something. Broke my heart with Scottie Pippen, though. Something what? broke my heart. So after Jordan retired, Scottie went on to play. I think he went to play in Portland, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It was a, he got so frustrated trying to be a leader. Y'all gonna remember this? I remember it well. Scotty was on the sideline crying one time. He had got so frustrated trying, you know, because the pressure of Jordan's retired. Will Pippen be able to carry a team? Is uh -huh. he the star that you know he was? And he was good. He was good, uh -huh. but it wasn't. It wasn't like he left and became Michael. Well, remember this: when MJ retired in uh, ninety three or after the ninety three season, Pip took over the Bulls. Yeah. And he led us to 55 wins mm. and playing the Knicks here on this call that uh, the referee said he fouled Hubert Davis and which Hubert shot two free throws with a second left. Yeah. And I'll never forget that. But that year, Pitt was uh, MVP of the All-Star game. He was running. Um, and running for the MVP. He had a great the season. League. He had a but, great season. But Pitt, could, he could have... He didn't get the chip, though. Yeah. And that's what, you know, when you play with somebody yeah. like Jordan, that's uh -huh. what you compared against. Did you get the chip, though, without Jordan? I mean, listen, P Pippen well, still had an amazing career, but I hear what you're I'm saying. I'm just, yeah. listen, no, listen this, is, geez, this is real basketball yeah. conversation that people have. How, no, many, how many chips did uh, MJ get without Pip? True indeed. Good question. Zero. Zero. But, I mean, it takes, it takes, it takes a team. But it takes really um, two guys, one guy knowing that he's the boss, and then for and lack his of support, a better phrase, and his support. And his support. How yeah. much y'all uh, crossover, uh, and we're going we're gonna to let you go in a second, but how much crossover did you have with Oakley? Do you guys have a year or two together? Yeah. Oak. Oh, man. that's my. That was my mentor. Really? He, 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 ta he taught, taught me. You. Man, he taught me everything about basketball in terms of and how get, to fight. Oh, get, get he taught you how to fight. Uh, sharpen your nails before <laughs> you go out. Seriously. Hey, sharpen your nails. You do whatever it takes. It, it takes. And, you know, I mean, I, you know. All right, confession. Over. Horace Grant confessions right now. Uh-oh. Your dirtiest move. When you look back, everybody got a dirty move. Grab shorts, pinch a guy, you know, put the elbow right under the rib. Everybody got a little move. Stick your knee out when Stick they're coming by some, the screen. Something, something. Horace Grant, go-to dirty move. On the free throw line. And I know a guy is, say, like a Kevin Willis or Rick Mahorn. I know they're going to punch me in my back, to, even on the free throw line. I stick my left foot out, my leg out, and just try my best to trip their butts. Yeah, <laughs> Trip that ass. Yes. Trip, trip them. Who's the dirtiest player you ever played against? Bill Lambeer. I respect the he heck out of him, but uh, I was shaking hand. And uh, never invited him into my house. <laughs> you respect him, but not that one. Dirt. Just dirty. Just down well, dirty. So with the, the Pistons, the bad boys, that whole bad boys thing, they were that bad. Listen, man, I'm telling you. You know, and I love Isaiah. I love Zeke, man. But uh, that choir boy face. He's a dirt bag. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know a, him, too. That's a snake in the grass, man. man. Is, that's a snake in the grass. But, hey, you would love to have guys like that on your team. Do you remember a time, a long, many, many years ago, this was a story that was in my neighborhood. It was a rumor in my neighborhood. You can ruin it right now for me. People said that one time, Charles Oakley's cousin lived around the corner from me mm -hmm. in Chevy Chase, Maryland. And then when y'all came to play the Bullets, people said that my neighbor Warren, that Charles Oakley 
came to the house with Michael Jordan and Horace Grant. Do you ever remember going to Charles Oakley's cousin's house for dinner? He's a liar. Well, I remember going to his house in Cleveland for dinner. No, damn it. Hey, I Cleveland. knew Jordan never came to the hood. <laughs> and by the way, the hood, hey. not exactly the hood. Hey. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we went to uh, uh, when... You know, Oak is from Cleveland, yeah. and uh, we used to go over there, and his mom, man, used to throw down this meal, and Oak boys used to be in the back standing up, you know, back in the day, you know, you wear the gloves with the with the fist out like this, man, making sure everything was on cool. The, yeah, by, everything was cool. By the way, speaking <laughs> of your hands, I'm sorry, can we do, can I just see your hand for a second? I mean, Ebro. You look like a child. <laughs> I'm a, she, these, are, these are man hands. This is a monstrous man. Uh, Horace Grant, um, he'll, will you be at the NBA house during the All-Star weekend? Do we got him on, oh, the, yeah. schedule? We got him on the schedule? There's two locations. Run those locations again, bro. Uh, there's one you, There's one in the city, of course, um, that's open on from the 10th to the 16th at uh, Skylight, Moynihan Station, and then Brooklyn, LIU Brooklyn, Paramount Theater, 11th through the 15th. And the, the official title is what? The NBA All-Star House? Uh, NBA House. Just NBA House. That's right. It's the official fan hub for NBA All Star 2015. You can hang out with uh, legends, um, appearances, yada yada yada. It's going to be awesome. I, Go ahead, I, Lord. Uh, I just got on social media, so you got to hit me up on. Uh, <laughs> Get your plug hey, in, Horace. Hey, 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 hit me up on Horace Grant 54 on. I knew it. Twitter. I knew it was Horace Grant 54. Uh, I knew it. Instagram. All of that all stuff. Of that. All of that. So. Um, the Knicks. Your man, your man, Phil Jackson and Derek Fisher. Yeah. Um, trying to pull something together. It's not coming together as fast as they thought it would, or at least the city thought it. Would. I'm sure Phil knew it was going to take some time. Um, any opinion on that? Because this is the worst yeah. the Knicks have ever been. Yeah, it's bad right now. But I, mean, I say to the Knicks fans out there, be patient. Phil and D. Fish is going to get the pieces in here. Believe me when I say this, fans. They're going to get the pieces in here to make that triangle uh, work. And believe me, they won a few games in a row that, um, already. But be patient with these guys. I mean, you know, if if the triangle can work for MJ and Kobe, it's going to work here. Just need the pieces. You think player? You think some of these players now are lazy? They don't want to learn it. They want to free form. They don't. They don't want to commit to what the triangle really is. Because when you're not winning, uh, you're thinking that okay, nah, this let is me not just play. Let, yeah, us let, play. let us play. No, no, that's not Phil, and that's not D Fish. And if you're that type of player, you're not gonna be Survive, here for long. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, Horace Grant. Anything we? La- I mean, we got Horace Grant here, B. I, listen, like, I, I know. Listen, well, we, before we wrap this time, up, just... I, I, before we, I mean, listen. <laughs> Anything that we didn't cover. Talked about MJ fighting. How about this? I heard that uh, I'm a Celtics fan, oh. and I heard that uh, even though I'm wearing the fly Spurs throwback, but I heard that he hit the last shot in the history of Boston Garden. Yep. I was with the uh, Orlando Magic. Last shot. Closed it down. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Why didn't you wear your goggles today? Yeah. You should have worn your goggles. Well, you know, I ain't want to sign too many autographs out there, man. You know, and I ain't want people hitting me with. Uh, so what you saying? So you don't wear your goggles, so you can say that you're Harvey and not Horace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you know, yo, me, Harvey uh, gonna come up here and uh, try to see me. Yo, uh, Ebro, don't, don't. I don't want no problems, man. Just come on, man. <laughs> Horace, thank you, man. Uh, uh, thank you guys for having me, man. Uh, can't wait to be uh, get back here on the 11th of February for All Star Weekend yeah, and man. looking for having some fun with the fans. That's what's up, man. Uh, shout! I know you want to shout your Instagram and Twitter one more time. Yeah, Horace Grant fifty four. My advice to you: Do not teach 